solution. I still, I don't know. Part of me wants to still say it's Ayane and the, and the butler. The butler did it. One hour later, Gavin and the Kotashira estate parlor are Ayane and her mother, Kazuya and the servant, and Mie. They're all informed by Monba that the culprit has been discovered, and so everyone present are visibly quite nervous. But it could be. Also... Well, we know it's one of them. It's, it could be a family affair. Under that heavy atmosphere, Riho enters the room with Manabe and Man Manba and Manabe. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for waiting. It seems everyone is called is accounted for. Inspector Manba, you summoned us here saying. Oh. Wrong voice. Stop pointing at the wrong person. Inspector Monba, you summoned us here, saying the culprit has been discovered. Does that mean that both Kosaku and Seiji were killed by someone? I believe Miss Rio here will explain that. Miss Rio, if you will. Right. Here we go. At Monba's introduction, Rio takes a step forward. As she does, the room fills with noise. W wait, just a moment. This young lady is going to explain it? My apologies, Inspector, but as a jokes go, this is quite tasteless. Isn't she just a civilian? Everyone begins to complain, but Riho signs them with a single thundering exclamation. Silence! True, I am just a civilian, but I was the one who figured out the culprit behind the case. And I'd like to share that truth with all of you, but I think holding a question-answer session should make it easier to understand. So to that end, I'll need one of you to act as my partner here. Ayane? Ayane replies with an odd, somewhat squeaky voice at being named. M me? Yes, I'll start explaining my reasoning, so if anything does, doesn't make sense to you, I want you to call me out on it. I don't mind if you try to outright argue me down. Alright? Or, fine, I guess, but it's weird s seeing you like this. Now I moaned in complaint, but steps up to plate nonetheless. Seemingly satisfied, Rios takes a single deep breath and parts lips to speak. Let us begin. When I tried to solve Kasaku and Seiji's death, the biggest issue was that there was no sign that they were done by the same culprit. The only one that might have killed Kosaku that night was Seiji. Everyone else had alibis. Yeah, that's right. Mom, Kazuya, and I were in the meeting discussing the previous head's funeral. Yes, but then the only person without an alibi, Seiji, died next, in which case the two murders didn't have a common culprit. So I stopped thinking of this as a serial murder and tried to focus on Seiji's death, and as a result, I figured out who killed Seiji. She already said that this, but Riho once again points out she found out who the culprit was. Everyone presents exchange doubtful glances. Among everyone, Ayane alone replies in her usual tone. I'm only arguing here because you told me to, but Uncle Seiji was in a closed room. How could he have been murdered? Well, the crossbow we found in that room had a string tied to its trigger. The string was fixed to the trigger and strained in such a way that if it were to cut in a certain moment, it would fire an arrow. No, but like, no one was around the room when Seiji was shot. No one could have cut the string. No, the string wasn't directly cut by someone. It was cut using the power of nature, and there were traces proving that in the room. And that proof is... The burn marks on the tatami. Huh? The tatami? Yes, do you know where, what a burning lens is? It's when a mirror, water, or a plastic bottle serve as a lens to reflect sunlight and cause a fire. And that culprit trick this time, hence the burn marks on the tatami mat. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait a second. There weren't any mirror or plastic bottles in the room, so how? They used a certain object, and the only one person could have set it up. In other words, whoever set it up was the culprit. Okay, but like, when and how did the culprit set it up? It's still a closed room, you know. Well, that was. Ayana, you went out to get us ice cream before the incident happened, right? I, I did, but I just I just went to the kitchen and came back. I didn't go into the seclusion room, because uh, Kazuya saw me, didn't he? Kazuya nods agreement at Yanni's words, but Riho continues, not paying any mind. Right, you didn't enter the seclusion room, but couldn't you take the back door from the kitchen to the backyard? And in the backyard, there's a small window leading to the seclusion room. Wait up! You're trying to make this sound like I'm the culprit. Why, why would I do it? A beggar could have snuck over the fence or through the back entrance or something. No, to pull off the crime, you had to have gone through the kitchen once. The kitchen? Why would the culprit have to go through there? Why would they have to go through the kitchen? I have evidence that can explain it, and that's... The goldfish tank in the seclusion room. The culprit used the goldfish bowl as the burning lens. 
Huh? Maybe not. Uh, uh, hilarious. Hilarious? Well, yeah, that's hilarious. I mean, what was there? Any water in the goldfish tank? You can't function as a burning lens without any water, right? Right, and that's how I figured out you were the culprit, Ayane. Huh? When we heard Seiji's scream ran to the room, the goldfish tank looked empty at sight. But when we checked later, there was a bit of water at the bottom of the tank. What the hell? Maybe you just saw wrong, and I can't... And can it even function as a lens with so little water? It's possible. What? Assuming that the water is actually was actually ice that clung to the glass. There was an actual- there was actually a TV show that tried and successfully used ice as a lens to start a fire. In other words, an ice lens could have been used to burn off the string to set, set on the crossbow. But- but how would you even make a lens of ice? That should- that show used a board to polish the ice into a lens shape, but it's even simpler if you use the goldfish tank shape. First you take the bowl, put a bit of water into it, and put it in the fridge until it's tilted. Then you put the water in the other side and freeze it the same way. This gives the impression that there's no water in the tank. And you can probably use anti-fog spray or natural detergent to make sure no water droplets surface on the ice. And as time passed by, the ice melts, leaving only a bit of water in the tank. It was set up so that it was, if one were to check after the crime, they wouldn't be able to tell a burning lens was used. Uh, uh. The culprit kept the tank in the fridge, and then waited to place it in the seclusion room through the window, and they found a good spot earlier. Seiji was facing forward and performing the... A Bisu chant, so he probably didn't notice, notice a bit of noise from the outside. Then, as time went by, the sunlight reflected off the lens, burns through the string, and fired the arrow. That was the trick behind the case. And, the only one who went through the kitchen and could have done it, it was you, Ayane. Guess it's the end of the line. Hey, I got something right again. I should be a detective. No, I shouldn't. Now his expression completely changed as he shrugs, as the weight has been taken off her shoulder. Right, you got it. Oh, right. I did it. That asshole would have would always drinking it violent. He'd shoot animals with crossbows. Beat Kazuya. He didn't deserve to be the family head. So I've been preparing forever to teach him a lesson when he, the right time came. It was the same with Uncle Kasaku. He was the selfish bastard who ran from his family, and Mom had to clean up the messes he left behind. Mom was the one who kept this family together so far, so he's the one who deserves to be the family head. Ayane, you... But I do feel bad for getting you mixed up in this. Riho, for real, sorry. Yane speaks with her usual bright tone. There's no sign of regret in her expression. If anything, she looks refreshed and relieved. Wait just a moment. Maybe who had kept silent until then suddenly speaks up. Her face looking toward with so much anger, Riho had never seen her like this. You you killed my father for something like that? You didn't have to go that far. Why? Why would you have to kill my dad, too? I didn't know your dad. Huh? I didn't kill Uncle Kusaku. I was honestly shocked to hear he died. I figured that so long as it wasn't that piece of shit Seiji, I wouldn't mind if Uncle Kusaku came back and became the next head. That's a lie! The, the why? Ryo steps forward as if to stop Mie from pressing, pressing any more on Ayane. Ryo! Mie, what Ayane is saying is true. Ayane didn't kill Kusaku. But then, who did? Ryo shakes her head and after pause tells Mie the truth. Nobody set his death up. It really was just an accident. An accident? Mie, you told me Kosaku had high blood pressure, right? And that he's taking medicine for it? Y yeah. That's part of the reason that... And the drink he ordered in the restaurant, the pear banquet? Eh, the pear banquet. Yeah. There's one thing people who are taking high blood pressure medicine aren't allowed to eat or drink. Consuming it makes the medicine work too well, which makes their blood pressure plummet. It can make people unable to stand or even pass out. That's... Then... The non-alcoholic cocktail he ordered, the pear banquet, is made of, out of pears and grapefruits. He probably can't eat grapefruits with his medicine, but because the drink's called a pear banquet, he didn't know. So I think that because he drank it, Kosaku passed out while driving. That's... If I... If I had noticed that, Dad wouldn't have died. It wasn't your fault, Mie. It really was just an unfortunate coincidence. <laughs> Yeah, another crying fit. Mie breaks down in tears, Ryo embraces her gently. Behind them, Manba quietly leads Ayane out of the room. Well, I was right about it being Ayane. At least on the one part. Epilogue! Lights off my screen. The next day. Ryo has sold everything... Ryo, who had solved everything exploring the banks of Lake Shinji with Manabe. 
So in the end, he realized it in the middle of the investigation that Kosaku was... Yeah, I'm sorry. I figured it would shock Mie. Even back then, I wasn't sure if I should tell her up until the very last moment. You did good. Why don't we gently pat Ryo on the head? Losing a loved one so suddenly is tragic. The fact there wasn't a culprit meant Mio doesn't have to keep holding a grudge against anyone. In a way, I think you saved her. You think? I hope so. I'm sure of it. <laughs> You're so nice today, Manabe. That's rude. I'm always nice, as long as you don't start spouting out weird puns. Well, I guess I can't exactly fix that habit. My god. Mami sighs and exasperating turns her camcorder at Ryo. Now give us one line to wrap this up, star actress. Hmm. Well... Let's go, three, two, action! And so ended our encounter with the first case. We couldn't save everyone involved, but I did save a good friend of mine, and I'm satisfied with that. Let us meet again this time in a land of Iwami. Alright, that was passable. Alright, that was passable. And you're back to being strict, Manabe, again. Woo! Another chapter down! Oh. Mm. I'm just stretching, Iris. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. I'm gonna go make me some orange chicken. Because I had a craving and that's what I'm gonna do. See ya! Oh, did you just hit your head up? Shaking it? Right! Okay, okay, okay. Oh, ah! My foot!